Welcome to Inside Astronomy, where we try here to put the physics or science back into astronomy. Of course, one of the big topics that's on YouTube or many YouTubers cover is astrophotography. And we will be no different here. However, we'll try to keep it more factual based or evidence based on this channel. Um, this channel was started more than 10 years ago now. However, it took a back seat to life, to a new career, to many other things. But today I've decided to restart it with the arrival of a new telescope. That new telescope, I hope, or I believe, will be a very special telescope. One that the, the community, uh, the astronomy community in general, will probably find very, very interesting. Certainly I do, and as a um, self-confessed, let's say, Takahashi fanboy, uh, this is a telescope that I have big hopes for. I've actually waited for this telescope for nearly three months now. Uh, when ASCAR introduced the SQA series, it looked very interesting. And there's some really excellent videos out there on the uh, smaller 50mm uh, version of this SQA. But when, in December last year, 2024, they introduced a 106. 106 for us Takahashi fanboys is a very, very interesting number because it already refers to a very famous telescope, the FSQ-106. Can this be the FSQ-106 killer? I hope so, because at half the price of the FSQ-106, I hope I'm going to get the same performance from this telescope. The difficulty with the claims that ASCAR are making for this telescope will be actually testing it, but to put this through its paces to give it a proper test to determine whether or not, well, whether or not I've wasted my money or this really is the next big thing, the rival to the Takahashi FSQ 106. I'm not going to discuss the case. I'm going to get straight to it, straight to the telescope itself. We have a very famous expression in English, you never get a second chance to make a first good impression. And boy, oh boy, does this telescope make a very first good impression. The build quality of the telescope is excellent. The focuser is buttery smooth, excellent. And what's really surprising is the rotator is really quite firm to turn and very smooth, but very firm and without any play whatsoever. The whole fit and finish of the telescope is great, to be frank. Um, there's nothing here to complain about. Even the fit and finish of the dew cap, which is strange to probably point out to people, but it's a quality piece of kit from one end to the other. This telescope looks fantastic. And I guess the only question now is, does it perform fantastically? The other thing, and again, maybe this will say more to astrophotographers than anybody else. I like the fact that on this telescope, they've given us a proper lost Mandy plate with a lot of real estate there to play with. On the top here, so for balancing, that will become important for many people. Uh, I know uh, with some telescopes I've purchased in the past, I've had to swap out the lost Mandy plate to basically put a bigger one on so you could even balance the actual telescope itself. On this, there's no issues whatsoever. The cradle is fantastic. The plate is great. The fit and finish of the telescope, beautiful. And I love these details. These little silver plates they put on the telescope. Astrograph on the top there. Still haven't removed that sticker yet. That will uh, happen soon enough. But the whole thing is beautiful. They also give you two uh, finder holders here at the back. I'm not sure why they did that, just a, I guess a choice to move it left or right, but uh, yeah, soon enough we'll make this, uh, we'll cover this in cables and a computer and get this running under the night sky. But the big question here is now, to be frank, and let's be honest with, with, with ourselves, how do we test this telescope? Because according to the performance specified by ASCAR, um, 0.1 micron, 0.16 micron stars in the center, less than two micron stars to the edge of a full frame sensor. Um, I definitely don't have a camera. 
that has the ability to uh, test this telescope. But I guess what's really important to most of us is one, that this is a quality item, which I can definitely testify it is. What's really important is to, to see how this performs under the night sky. And what I decided to do, what would be best, would be to put this up against one of my existing telescopes. Maybe not even a fair fight. Well, here's the challenger. Hopefully you can see how serious this challenge is going to be for the Ascar right now. There's a whole story actually behind this Epsilon. And I'll get to that in another video itself. Uh, but this is a Takahashi Epsilon 180ED. It's my favourite telescope at this moment in time. It's 2.8, it's very fast. And it, that's needed here in the Netherlands because unfortunately we don't get much time under the night sky that's clear. And when we do, you need to maximise that time. And again, when it is clear, it's not always, um, what should we say, excellent conditions as you would expect elsewhere in the world. So a lot of the time you end up collecting HA data with this Epsilon. However, I think one of the, one of the conditions I'm trying to rule out here um, is the actual sky conditions, my sky conditions, and to make sure both telescopes, that's a, well, it's not a fair fight, but as fair as possible condition-wise, both telescopes will be imaging under the same clear sky at the same time and performing side by side next to each other. Um, I know how the Epsilon performs. I know the images and the quality I can get from this. And if the Ascar can approach anything like the quality of the Epsilon, then I will be very, very happy. I'm more than happy to um, sign off on the SQA 106 as one of the next big things to come to the amateur astronomy marketplace. What more is to be said? Let's get on with the test and see how it goes. Now normally, as everybody knows, as soon as you buy something new in astronomy, well, you normally suffer the astronomy curse of cloudy nights for months and you never get a clear spell to test or to put these two side by side against each other. But fortunately for us, the month of March has been very generous and just as this came into my possession, we have some clear nights to test this SQA 106 against my existing Epsilon 180ED. So let's get on with that. Six. At the star, some of the stars here are just pinpoints, really small. Um, one of the reasons I've stayed away from small refractors, and I don't consider 106 a small refractor, but you know, likes of a 72, 80 millimeter refractors, is because they tend to balloon the stars up um, as you integrate over time. Uh, but this is an integration, I think, of 30 seconds uh, with the Sony A7R4. And as you can see, as I scroll through the left hand side of the image the stars are pinpoints it's amazing how how uh, good this telescope is i know this is not a very nice image uh, certainly not by any astrophotography standards that's for certain but it's just a quick test it's the only full frame camera i have to even make a test like this on the uh, ascar itself and again the pixel sizes here are too big to get or to verify the claims they're making their product literature for this telescope. Um, yeah, this looks very, very promising before we start the real test. Of course, the real test will be when the ASCAR goes up against the TAC, the Epsilon, and if it produces stars as good or to the same quality as the Epsilon, then we'll be on to essentially a winner here. Uh, but this is a very, very good start. Uh, again, uh, I'm not claiming this is by any means a uh, a test. Of, it's a comparison of sorts, just to give you an example of what happened on the night. Two second delay on the camera, so I wasn't even able to remotely shoot the camera, um, which would have been a lot better, of course, and I could have gone for a little bit longer exposures. But what to say?
this looks very, very, very promising right now. Um, nothing to complain about here, no misshapes. And they could be from vibration still as the mount it was damping after, after I pressed the shutter button and wait for the two second delay. But no, this looks, this looks excellent. Okay, so here are the two telescopes in the back garden set up, ready for the test. As you can see, the Ascar has got actually the slightly worse mount in the uh, SEM70. This is a second hand mount to me and uh, performs a little bit slightly worse overall than the SEM60. The SEM60 is a mount that I bought new. So uh, that mount actually performs a little bit better, which the, uh, which the Epsilon is on. Um, there's not much in it between the two. They're both um, guide sub uh, one arc second, but the uh, SEM60 regular gets down to just under half a ha an arc second. Whereas I've noticed with this uh, SEM70, which is again new to me, it gets to around about 0 0.68, 0 0.7 only. Okay, here we go in Pix Insight. And again, I want to stress this is by no means a scientific test, but I just wanted to put my own mind at rest to make the comparison with the Epsilon under the same scene conditions on the, on the same night to uh, see how the F, the uh, SQA106 from ASCAD would stand up to such a telescope with the, with the Epsilon having a clear advantage. You can already see the Epsilon image, which is from a four-thirds sensor, the 1600mm Pro, so it's a mono. The image I was shooting with the Epsilon was a uh, HOO, uh, where the uh, image on the uh, left there from the ASCAR is uh, straightforward RGB with one shot color from the tube tech. But I want to just zoom into the cluster here, just at the top of the head of the monkey, just over here. I want to see how these stars from the Epsilon, which I love, by the way, no problems with at all, how it stands up to the stars, the same stars in the Aska from the tube tech. And there you go. Um, what to say? Of course, the Epsilon is four times faster than the uh, ASCAR, basically it's the square of the difference. So you've got one telescope operating at 2.8, the other one operating at 4.8. Uh, so the square of the difference is four, so four times the speed for the Epsilon. So of course it's gonna look a lot smoother in this comparison, but the stars themselves are, wow, they're, 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 they're good, they're good enough. I mean, and these are, these are unprocessed stars, they're, they're, nothing's been done to them. Uh, and, you know, let's just overlay that just for everybody. I suppose I should do that as well. Those stars are amazing from from a refractor, which doesn't have the same doors limit as the uh, as the Epsilon. But of course, the Epsilon is the central obstruction is not as fast, but I think those stars are excellent. And I think, yeah, that for me, this this is done. This is good enough. This comparison for me is pretty much done. This is the full stack now. So obviously in the full stack, the stars will be bigger um, because it's now stacking all the frames together to increase the signal in the final image, which this is again an unprocessed stack. Uh, so not a great deal has been done to it, but again, you know, just to compare the stars, I remember, do remember, I'm comparing this, these stars from the Ascar to the stars from an Epsilon telescope. So I'm very happy with what I'm seeing here. And I think, uh, yeah, other YouTubers will take this further with other experiments, but uh, other comparisons. But I think for me, short of putting an astro camera, full frame ast cooled astro camera on it, which I don't have, um, what more can I do? I think this is going to be an excellent telescope. It's going to be many, many hours of, uh, of quality data, which I can then process. So what can we conclude from the test? As you know, it wasn't really a fair fight. The Takahashi has the uh, greater diameter, so better doors limit or Riley limit, whichever one you prefer. It has a central structure obstruction, so okay, the, this has the better contrast, being a 106 full clear aperture. Well, 
I was astounded. I'm used to seeing very low full width half max numbers coming from the Epsilon. What I'm not used to, unless it's my other Epsilon, is seeing a telescope, certainly a refractor, beat those full width half max values. And this was doing it constantly on the night. The stars that were coming from this are absolutely excellent. Really, really, and I'm going to say pun intended, tack sharp. Let's face it, my uh, one-shot colour TubeTech camera has 3.7 micron pixels. This can focus the light uh, to a finer point than my camera can detect. So that's the problem we're stuck with right now. I don't know of any way of uh, testing correctly or, let's say, in controlled conditions, the claims that ASCA are making for this telescope, but from everything I've seen, uh, from a practical, realistic use point of view, this telescope, albeit slower than my um, Epsilon, is performing just as good, if not better. So that's all I can really say. Um, it's a lot of money. It's a big investment to make for a lot of people in this hobby. I realise that. I'm lucky enough to be able to make that investment. And again, this is not a sponsored video. This is with, paid for with my own money. Um, I, have, I have owned a baby Q uh, in the past, an FSQ85, which was also an excellent telescope. It's one of the telescopes I regret selling. Maybe it's a story for another video. But uh, I, I, can't, I cannot recommend this telescope highly enough. I don't think anybody who will buys into this ASCA SQA106 will regret it. And that's all I can really say. Um, I realise in this video, by the way, that the sound quality has not been excellent. And I will work to improve that as I go along making these uh, YouTube videos. But I thank you for your time, for your patience, for being here. And if you like what you saw and uh, would like to see more content from myself on the Inside Astronomy channel, then uh, please give me a thumbs up and a like, as everyone says. And uh, I will catch you all next time. Bye for now.